we're now in the virtual world but i'm delighted we to be were, we were we were so we were so honored two years ago when you actually flew over from london all the way to be part of india wine awards in 2019 <laughs> Yeah. And gosh, that seems so far back in time. You know, 2020 has just been a bit of a blur, hasn't it, for all of us? But uh, I'm I'm so grateful that you're here today. And today we will be discussing uh, uh, and having an enthralling discussion on the growing importance of wine and beverage education in India, how, how to build a career in the wine industry, and how good education can actually help shape careers for professionals in the country. I'm one such example, but of course we're going to uh, you know after my chat with you we're going to have two other people join on this discussion to take us through their own life journeys and how they decided and how WCT education has helped them so to deep dive straight into our discussion Ian my first question to you would be uh, WCT has had such an amazing enviable history of where it was and what it's become today this formidable leader in the world in in wine spirits and sake education tell us a little bit about this journey how it came to be recognized as such a globally recognized educational body of tremendous credibility. Okay, yeah, th yeah, uh, good question. We've been around for 50 years, but um, until I, I joined 19 years ago now, uh, when I joined, it was still very much a UK centric organization. But I worked in a, I worked in a multinational spirits company called Seagram. And I, I realized the importance of, of, of having lots of eggs in lots of baskets and the internationalization of of WCT to be to be to me was a was a completely natural thing to do when I first joined and it was certainly one of my goals and what we did we um we set about uh finding the markets where we knew that education in in wines and in spirits in those days we didn't have sake in those earlier days but in the, the I'm talking about 2002 when I joined and and we we set about looking at uh, at markets where education in wines and spirits was going to be a key driver of not just the industry but but people's opportunities for careers within that industry so we we all we all when i joined we already had um providers in countries like america hong kong couple in singapore japan f even france so the british yeah. people keep teaching the french about um about wines and 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 it basically grew from there and the reputation of, of WSCT's qualifications grew on a worldwide basis and more and more countries started to realize that if they needed to educate people who worked in the either the hospitality sector or yes. the wine and spirit sector that they needed a global qualification because we live in a we live in a world where people aren't necessarily going to be staying in the same place and they need they needed a global uh, qualification. So we, we 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 were there at the right time, to be honest, as the, as the world opened up. And um, as you said, quite rightly, seventy countries, um, and and to have India as one of those. And it's you know it's a pretty prominent country now. It's ama it's amazing how it's grown. So the globalization happened really because it was one of my stated goals when I joined the WSCT. Um, and we've we've our business has grown. As a result of of all the exponential growth that we've had in pretty pretty much all of those seventy countries we currently operate in, that's amazing. I'm, I'm I'm amazed, and I have so much admiration for, you know, I mean, to scale up to to be represented in across seventy countries is one thing, but to be able to sort of have it down to this great level of discipline and processes and policies in place and a certain level of quality that gets maintained um, throughout all the countries where your courses are offered is another ball game, isn't it? I mean, that must have been a huge, huge, uh, I, one can see that there's such a massive machinery at play at the background that sort of ensures that that takes place. I, I can't help but think back in 2009 when I uh, just had flown back having done my WCT level three actually at the time um, and I was I just about to embark on the level uh, four the diploma I thought I should become an approved program provider of WCT and uh, yeah, I, I don't know for some reason I thought I had, I had this brainwave of an idea that nobody else in this in in this world had had only to realize later that you were already across so many countries but when i thought of it i thought oh god i'm being such a genius why don't i just start offering wscd courses and i did that because i realized that 
not everybody would uh, you know would have the 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 time and the resources to be able to fly over to london like i had done and take those courses and i thought if this industry was to grow to a certain size we would uh, we would need to have a world class educational uh, academy here in place that could offer the wsed courses and provide an experience for an individual like pretty much like he was literally just sitting in london and and doing the course you know with the wines and yeah. the level of teaching and so on and so forth but even after 12 years of having done this and of course we've seen a massive amount of growth but um, it's still no way i feel comparable to some of the success you've achieved in some of the other markets so my question uh, ian is give us an example of a fabulous case study of some other market maybe even china or wherever else you feel where which has seen an exponential growth of wsct education and how it's been sort of really set to stage to to shaping the industry of wine spirits and alcobev in that country okay i mean good, again a good question i mean i'll i'll, I'll probably give two uh, two um answers to that question actually i mean we know about the size of china so it's a it was a it was somewhere that we um we we had already targeted as a big as a big growth option but actually the two the two examples i'll give first is the usa and um, because the usa was very much a mature market in terms of their knowledge of wines and fabulous restaurants great hotels and wine already had a very big place in the in in the US uh, way of way of life as indeed spirits as well so and, and the the case study there really is that we got we got into the the middle tier of distribution which is the distributor network because in in America everything has to go through distributors so you have produce it's the three tier system producers go through distributors and the products end up in restaurants or stores so that was a, that was one way one one very successful case study yeah. in the US the USA is now our number one market but the other one actually i'm going to i'm going to point to india because you know india was very much a, a i describe it as a fledgling particularly wine market you know you you some of you've led the way give you know given your your um, your master of wine qualification you know well, well done uh, but india has been a fa fantastic case study for us because we 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 first uh, started doing running courses in india uh, in 2007 um and as you said so long you started in 2009 uh, and we we do have we we have a small number of providers in india so we've, we've got six providers but we're we're starting to get good coverage um and and, and and it's not so it's not just mumbai it's uh, it's also um, bangalore it's, it's delhi um and 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 the key for us really is to get is to get influence so people like yourself mws but also trendsetters uh, but but also getting into hospitality schools um, bar schools and liquor stores and we do appreciate that it's 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 far more difficult in a country like india than it is in a, in the in in the united states in the united states there's already huge infrastructure in india not quite so much and of course we're we're obviously very aware of what's happened during the pandemic in india and certainly when we watch the news at the beginning of of covid yeah yeah you know, it, it, things were pretty pretty terrible in india so with so it's remarkable that we've we've actually got uh that the business in in india is actually holding up pretty well and it has and it, it does have huge potential because uh it's it's a fledgling wine market but we've seen how the how the wine uh consumption has grown in india so it's a it's a it's a fantastic opportunity for us so so yeah two case studies one the the, the big usa which big, is the big giant out. usa yeah. the big giant yeah and the other is, is, is india which is just one example of of countries where where we have started delivering wscg qualifications over the last 10 or 15 so there's been a lot of talk in in india more recently because now you know the post pandemic is almost like a a new beginning for 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 a lot of us you know mindset wise as well we're all sort of thinking okay let's start over let's start on a clean chapter also a lot of the businesses evolved now you know we clearly now cannot um cannot ignore the digitization and the importance of digitization for our businesses and so on yeah. uh, so there's been a lot of talk within India about how we can make this wine industry in India 
be five times its size that it is over the next five years. We just finished an, a, a very enriching panel discussion with some of the Indian leading wine and uh, wine producers of India and some critics and writers on talking about this. But my question to you is, in your opinion, what role does education play in helping this industry propel to the heights that we are envisioning uh, how do you see because i think you know i think it's important to make this pitch because i think the industry sometimes fails to understand this they they don't understand the importance of training education and i know that everything that you do has been backed by a lot of research and stats and uh, i mean you know how it plays out so do share with us your your learnings of how this could help shape or propel the growth of our industry yeah well i've spent 19 years saying to everybody that education is the key to driving the growth of what of a wine market and wine sale uh, and i say to companies don't think of training and education as, as as something that you can just cut if if times are hard because training and education actually adds money to the bottom line for any wine company but yeah. also uh, if you're trying to grow the market to the extent that you, you've just mentioned, and I think it's perfectly achievable, education plays such a big part in it because the education that we provide tumbles right down to the consumer. So it's, it's so we have consumers who do our courses, but but the when when we're doing education for people who are working in particularly the hospitality sector, they have through their education the ability to convince people who are coming into their restaurants or bars or hotels to spend a bit more on wine to try a different wine maybe to have wine when when before they might not have even considered having wine with their with with their, with their, their food yes. or with their meal so so it it it's education just adds value to the to the industry because people who are educated can persuade the consumers who are going to who are going to be so important to drive the market to try new wines, to spend a bit more money, and and to yes. embrace wine as part of part of their daily yes. lives. Yes, and you know I'm a big believer of the fact Ian, that no amount of education ever goes to waste. Oh, so no, no, no. I, you know, having studied for ten years back to back in wines, I just think that it's now such an intrinsic part of my personality. You know, it's it's so me, it's so within me mm -hmm. uh, that it automatically translates to um, everything I say, everything I do. It's helped me create. It's helped me pioneer. It's helped me. Um, it's given me the confidence I need to speak in a certain way with authority or with assertion. And sorry, I'm just sort of harping about myself. But the point I'm making really is that you know it's that it happens at an individual level but when there are thousands and thousands of such individuals that come together to to partake in this education um then it creates an industry because it's created a culture isn't it like yes. all of us together then make a culture and then therefore we we sort of become part of an industry that takes a certain shape so um there's always you know i get that uh, either organizations and less so now because i think when we started out 10 years ago we had a lot of organizations who didn't see the value of education or trainings uh and how it could add to their bottom lines today less so uh but uh, i would still say and maybe this is a bit of a micro question but and i'm sure you witness this in other countries as well but there's always it's a fair share of naysayers in every country right people who oh, would yeah. look to a wsct or or an organization like wsct not targeting wsct specifically but to say that oh here's a global organization what do they know about what india needs locally uh, let me provide something that is very local centric keeping in mind you know the indianness of the the course design and so on. Um, I, of course, have my my retort and my answer to that. But I'd love to hear yours, Ian. How do you deal with or combat or what do you say or maybe not even say against such naysayers? Well, I think yeah, and there's, there there are there's lots of naysayers. I mean, I'm old I'm old enough to remember in the UK. I mean, I joined the trade in the UK in the 19, 1977, which is before I'm sure most people on this on this in this call uh, were, were born and, and i joined it at a time when wine in the uk was very much the domain of the people who had lots of money 
who came from a rich family. Um, I personally, my family never drank wine as, as, a, as a, in their day to day lives. So I just fell in love with wine. And that's why I joined it. But, the, but there were a lot of people who said um, that, that, that wine is never going to take off in the UK. And of course, it, of course it did. And, and there were just as many people who said, you know, why, why do you need education in um, people don't need to learn about motor cars when they go and buy a, buy a, buy their next next car, and and but wine is an incredibly complicated subject. We all know that uh, incredibly complicated, and 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 you made the point about you know we are a global organisation. We just happen to be based in London. That's where our head office is, but we ha we now have subsidiary businesses around the world, and as you know, we've got providers in different countries. But the key the key for us is that it's it is a global qualification. But of course, the teaching and you're involved in teaching some of the, the teaching can put a subtle nuance onto the into the course to make sure that it is that it is although there's a global syllabus for the courses that the teaching leans towards the different priorities in different countries whether that's india or pa paraguay or you know one of the newest countries that we've opened in ghana in africa you know you, that's a they, they need a completely different approach so we do rely on the educators to put us put a put put the correct focus to make sure it's relevant to the but we're now, I think we're now getting with the, you know the naysayers I think I think they're all realizing that actually education is pretty good you know, and we you know we know in, in lots of facets of life education plays such sure. a, a key part of the future. sure I think personally for me I've, I've really benefited from the fact that when I've learned from WSCT the learning has just been so structured um, yeah. I think if I'd gone about it in some local way or at my own pace or in my own way, uh, I might have done it very randomly. And so it wouldn't have looked like a, a, a string or a bead of pearls, you know, very well sort of strung together. Yeah. Uh, it would have just looked a bit haphazard, you know, or accumulation of knowledge would have been a bit haphazard. I think when you go with somebody um, who's virtually perfected it through a more templatized version, there is a, a structured built up of knowledge course and level after level uh, that really then allows you to learn uh, the right thing at the right time in the right way just when your mind is ready for it you know because you've already yeah. learned the, the the foundation below that and that's rock solid and then it just kind of gives you that extra level of information which i think sometimes if you if one tries to design something uh, or and and i love your point Ian, about the fact that um Education is only as good as the educator themselves, isn't it? The, 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 the syllabus could be globally designed, but the dissemination of that knowledge can always be adapted by the educator, depending on which country, the yeah. knowledge level or the understanding of the students in the classroom, how much or how less you need to deliberate on a certain point, what do you need to pay more attention to and vice versa. So I think all of these things is what makes for a more powerful combination. You know, the localized understanding of the pulse that the educator has of the market and its students and the, the strength of the global curriculum um, that one can draw from to teach is what makes for a very powerful combination. And I personally, as a professional, benefited immensely from all the learning that I have done at WCT, one level after another, all the way up to the flagship diploma, which I passed in 2010. Um, and, and, and a little knowledge goes a long way. And, you know, you've, you've gone right up through all the levels and even beyond WSCT, obviously, to, to master of mine. But, but even at level one, which is a one day course, you learn enough to be able to influence someone who's in you, who, who walked through your, the door of your restaurant or your bar or your hotel. So a little knowledge goes a very long way. And we obviously we, we, we want people to go up the, up, up the ladder in terms of you know, I have to say this, Ian, and I might sound a bit trivial saying this, but I really love the level one course in wine. <laughs> in it's good, isn't it? <laughs> I find myself going back to it every time. And you know what the beauty of that course is every time we teach it, we learn something new. I don't know how because it's still very foundation. But yeah. every time we go back to it because it's, you know, going back to basics never goes out of fashion somehow you know it's yes. all about the basics in the end so i find that course the most interesting and uh, uh yeah i've just had lots of, and the beauty again of 
every course that I've done from the WSCDs, I remember I remember doing the level one. I finished, I managed 100 out of 100. And I already started feeling like a master of wine at the end of that one. <laughs> I thought I know everything I need to know about wines. And I kept thinking, oh, I wonder what they're going to teach me at level two, because I mean, this seems comprehensive enough. And funny enough, I went through that feeling at every stage. After level two, I felt, oh my God, that was like, a lot like I've gone really as deep as I could possibly go there couldn't possibly be any more then came level three and that was the major jump and I thought oh my god this is this is like PhD now like I'm I'm full you know uh, neck deep in, in knowledge and, and then came the diploma which was another story and the rest is history yeah. but the point being um, every level that you go through it just makes you that much more competent confident and makes you feel like Oh my God, I think I know everything I need to know to go out there and make a difference. So it's yeah, not um, about... You use the, sorry, you, you oh. use the word confidence. That's absolutely what it's about. It's having the confidence to be able to talk to somebody just a, with a little bit of knowledge, but the confidence to be able to talk about a subject which 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 is it's complicated. And it's that's exactly it. And the different levels give you more confidence, more confidence, and even more confidence. That's what it's about. For and it's and you know one thing is, uh, I mean, I love the word confidence because you can't fake it. That's the yeah. other thing. You can't fake confidence. You either have it or you don't have it. And a lot of that confidence can come from solid learning. Yeah. You know, and like I had said, even at the India Wine Awards uh, uh, speech that uh, knowledge uh, investment in knowledge is the one that pays the highest rate of interest Absolutely. Uh, it never really goes out of fashion right so yeah. so Maybe. that's great okay ian i want to jump into a little bit of marketing i know you come with a marketing <laughs> yeah. background and yeah. my little interaction i've had with you on the in the car on the way to sula vineyards <laughs> i know that you're a true blue marketer at heart so um Tell us more about the importance of, uh, you know, your personal journey firstly, and how do you sort of find yourself using, uh, you know, your, your marketing understanding and the core or the instinct to make WSCD what it is and, you know, uh, more exciting as an organization? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, before I joined WSCD, I was, I was, um, marketing director of Seagram UK, but I was also, prior to that, I was global marketing manager for Martel Cognac, which is a, which is a product which I'm sure uh, you and people on this call know. But I, I sort of tumbled into marketing almost by accident, actually, because when I, um, when Seagram bought Martel Cognac as a, as, a, as a brand and as a company, they needed somebody who uh, had a bit of marketing experience, which I already had, um, who had some sales experience, which I already had but the, the reason i got the job was because i could speak french i was a fluent french speaker and i was having to deal with with the production team in in france so i sort of tumbled into it by accident but then my marketing career grew from brand manager marketing manager and as finally marketing director and i think the, the whole point and when i joined wct we didn't have a marketing the marketing department we had mm. we had a, one person who organized events and that and in those days it was one event a year the london wine fair now we've we've got a we've got a marketing team um of, of eight or nine people um and and to me marketing is so important because if you're going to grow a market you you've got you've got to get the right message across so the marketing message that we put across and of course marketing has changed in the 19 years since i was marketing director at seagram you know, the, the website had only just about been invented. Um, so digital marketing, which I've, I've, I've got a fantastic marketing team um, at WCT all over the world. And, and of course, everything, everything's done digitally now, whether it's through WeChat in China or other, other platforms. So I think the, the main thing is, is that for, for us, it's, it's, WCT is about learning, but you've got to, you've got to market to the world and that's, for, to companies and so the sort of the b2b stuff but also to the consumers as to what it is wct stands for what you're going to get what are the benefits are because as with any marketing it's about if i'm going to spend this yeah what do i get so so for us that that, that marketing effort is all about that and it's it's if, if i spend this or, or i invest in training for my members of staff this is what I'll get as a result of it. So, so, um, so we, we, that's why we've expanded our marketing team to us to the size it is. 
Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that. I do want to ask you, I'm conscious of the time because I know you have a call another 10 minutes, but I am going to ask you about how WSCT has adapted to the pandemic times. What have been some of the challenges and what are the opportunities that one can look forward to now going forward? Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, when the pandemic hit us and, you know, here we are, it, what's the date? I just at my computer. 10th of, 10th of March. It's literally 12 months to it the day. Is. 12 yeah. months to the day when we had to close our office, we shut our school in London, and we were already working on digital initiatives for education. So we already had what we call the online classroom. So you could do a, a, a course online. But it was a very small part of our total business. But then when the pandemic hit, and in, a, in many countries in the world, going to a, a classroom face-to-face -face with, with the pandemic really hitting the world became more and more and more impossible. Uh, it started obviously in China, and then suddenly by this time last year, the world had gone to a halt. We, weren't, we were hardly running any classes as in in a classroom so we fast tracked our digital uh, offering so the we put more resource into our online classroom team so that's that took care of the educational side but then we fast tracked the ability to do an examination online and this was a dream i'd had when i joined wset 19 years ago that at some stage you would be able to sit in your own house as i am and do an e WCT exam and get a qualification. So we've we 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 were already working on that, but we fast tracked because of uh, of the pandemic. Um, it's only available at the moment in English and only at levels one, and level two. But we have investment in place to roll it out into other languages and also to um, increase the capability of doing your exam online at levels three, and four. You could do education. You can do level three and level four in terms of online education but uh, but we've got a digital first strategy with WCT and it's, it's it's costing us quite a lot of money but we're prepared to invest in it uh, and i'm really proud of the team that we've got in the WCT who've made it all happen in such a such a really short space of time and to be honest it it it, it got us out of out of trouble when hardly anyone was doing a course in in particularly in april and early may and we introduced this whole end-to-end -end digital offering in the space of six weeks, which was... I, I, must, I, must, I must say this. I'm in deep admiration of how quickly and how proactively you rolled out the, the digitization of your courses, including the exam taking. I mean, for most of us, you know, we just... See, because one thing about the pandemic is we didn't know how long it would go on. When it started yeah. out, everybody thought, yeah. oh, it's going to be done in two months, you know, in two yeah, months, yeah. back to business. <laughs> So nobody yeah. knew, like back yeah. then in last March, who was thinking that even this March we'd, we'd be talking digitally yeah, and we couldn't yeah. be face to face, right? So yeah. nobody knew how long this was going to go on. And most organizations, uh, especially of the scale that, that WSCD is, could have, could have afforded to be complacent and say, well, let's wait it out. Let's just not offer anything. A lot of us locally did that, I have to admit. We didn't offer any courses for up to three months. We said, okay, we're shut for business and so on. Yeah. But I just love how nimble-footed um, and agile WSCD was, you quickly adapted. And then to think of the enormity of the task of having to roll this out across all the countries where you operate, I'm sure was no easy feat. So uh, my congratulations actually to you and the entire WSCD team. I, I just want to also say that I, I personally took a sake course as a student in the during the pandemic. I, so did I. So did I. I, 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 I <laughs> I was just sitting, I was whiling my time and all I was doing was a few social media posts. So I thought, <laughs> what can I do with my time? I said, let me do a level one in sake. It's just yeah, I said it I. So I, 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 I'm trying to find my certificate. I think I left my certificate in the office. Because yeah, I, I wanted to try. Uh, but I, <laughs> and, you know, I thought, okay, let me, and, you know, it, it did give me a direct exposure into yeah. what the students go through, you know, when yes. they take an exam and so on and so forth. And um, I did that. And I have to say, it was just brilliant. My experience as a student was brilliant because the um, the platform, you know, the uh, the technology platform yeah. from where I was studying the courses, we had this person helping out. We could shoot <laughs> questions anytime yeah. we wanted to, uh, and the exam part was particularly 
so smoothly executed like and not to say it was flawless i mean i had to show my entire surroundings i had to show my ears <laughs> yes. yeah. below oh, the yes. table i had to show my yes. eyes i mean we had to do a 360 degree you know um uh, disclosure yes. of yes. what was around us and i thought it was so full proof it was amazing i was so impressed actually um it, it worked brilliantly it worked flawlessly and there were no hiccups all a candidate needs to have is uninterrupted wi-fi and you're on yeah. you know it's, yeah. it's it works and now i i'm going to ask you the question i assume you passed the level 1 in some i actually got 100 out of 100 <sighs> You beat me then. <laughs> did you do the sake? I did, yeah, because I wanted to try the this the the exam system called remote invigilation, and I'd already done the diploma in wines, and I'd done the level two in spirits. So I thought I don't know much about sake. I'll 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 pretend I'll be a student. So and I wanted to try it all out. So I did the level one in sake. Yeah. Uh, I I did all the the. I probably didn't work quite as hard as you did maybe but uh I but I did went through the classroom programs and and like you when it came to the examination I got my phone out and I I I tell you what might have helped me I my last trip before the pandemic broke was to Japan and so Tokyo so I had lots of sake while I was there oh. so maybe that helped to some extent because I did a bit of you know learning about sake while I was yeah. there too so uh so maybe that helps but uh yeah. Uh, yeah it was great and i want to do, now do the level 3 in sake but i'm i'm hoping to do it in london so i'm waiting yeah. for things to open up a bit and obviously london's first on my on my list of places to visit um this has been so amazing ian if there's anything else you think you want to add and say to the indian audiences you're you're very welcome uh to but uh otherwise i've i've pretty much done well, yeah i just say i just say one thing if i may i do have to cut out on the phone i'm sorry i can't stay for the members of my team are going, are going to be Even in us the, like 40 in, minutes where we're, we're that's on fine. i mean i just want to say thank you for inviting me i never need a second invitation to talk about wct and to talk about the importance of education so it was great to be invited but also to say thank you to 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 use some of everything that you do but also we we do have educators across uh india now so we're looking forward to some really success really uh, some great success in india and and i and i and i hope you you you've all managed to stay relatively healthy in the teeth of the pandemic it's been pretty tough but i i'm an optimist and of course because i'm of a certain age i've already had my first vaccination in oh, my arm oh, oh yes oh yes so so i'm so hopefully i'll be i'll be secure but i just wanted to say thank you and and um and if if anybody wants to learn more about um about where they can study uh for a wst qualification um you know in india and anywhere around the world just visit wctglobal.com and you find all the information you need there but thank you so much for inviting me it's been an absolute pleasure to to be part of your thank event. you ian it's been such an honor and thank you for never saying no at least so far so it's <laughs> it's been brilliant and thank you for being so honest uh we we no i mean I'll be happy to let you go. We have two other people joining us who will talk about their personal experiences having studied from the WSCT and how they managed to shape their careers so brilliantly in different walks of life. So we have that up next. If it is and this is being recorded. So uh, can I can I record it. So I'm going Great. to send you the the lovely. recording. I will I will look forward to to watch it. I'm sorry I can't stay longer, but I wish you all I wish you all a great rest of the day and I look forward to sharing a glass of wine with you Sonal and either in London or possibly Very soon, very soon I look forward to that. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All the best. Bye, Bye for now.